23 verse 23 all of us have sinned and fallen short of god's glory meaning we are all sinners and no one is righteous we are made righteous before god through jesus's death on the cross when he took all our sins upon himself god's perfect righteousness is a gift and is ours the moment we take christ as our lord and savior the bible says in second corinthians 5 verse 21 for he made him jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him this verse says that we are made the righteousness of god in him in ourselves we are not righteous but the lord has made us perfectly righteous in his sight our obedience and having faith in jesus makes us righteous before god we are righteous before God by having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, by living by His commands, and by being obedient to God. My answer is God loves us by giving His life to cleanse our sins, to be righteous and accept Him as our Lord and Savior. Jungle out there on every side, I'm getting pressed in. But no fear, cause you know what I'm dressed in. I got peace all up in these boots, and it's better. Honestly, one of the commandments of God that I find difficult to follow is obey my parents. Yes, I do love and honor my parents, but sometimes I disobey um, them on the use of gadgets. Sometimes I exceed my usage limit. I am only allowed to use it once a week, either Fridays or Saturdays, with one hour use and one hour break. The solution I can think of is to control or lessening my time in using the gadget. Telling the truth is always difficult for me to follow. When I make a mistake, it is always hard and difficult for me to tell the truth. But the Bible always says that we always have to be truthful. He is a great God.
Happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day. And Thank be safe. you. Be safe. Stay home. Stay, stay at home. home. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. God bless everyone. Hi kids, this is Teacher Sid. Hope you're all doing great. Are you excited to learn something new today? Who remembered our topic last week? Yes, that's right. We talked about Elizabeth and Zechariah and how they shaped the life of John the Baptist and ours as well. Today, we will learn another Wonder Woman of the Bible and her name is Miriam. Before we go further with our lesson today, let us first pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you have given us, Lord God. We pray that you give us wisdom so that we will learn from the life of Miriam, and we pray that we will use it in our lives, O Lord. We pray that you give us strength always. All these things to us, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us go now to our power truth and power verse. Our power truth is, I can help others follow God. Let us repeat it again. I can help others follow God. Our power verse is found in Hebrews 13 verse 7. It says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Let us repeat it again. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Who knows here who Miriam is? Can you raise your hand, please? Yes, that's right. She's the older sister of Moses. Moses is the one who led the Israelites out of Egypt and accepted the Ten Commandments. But we will not be focusing on Moses, but on his brave and strong sister, Miriam. Do you know what these are? These are paper baskets. This is where our story will start. You can make your own baskets at home today. Just look at the next video. Okay kids, so now open your Bible at Exodus 2 verse 1 to 10 and let us all read together. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket along the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, 
Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of water. Thank you, Lord, for your word. When we read this story, we usually talk about Moses. But because it's Wonder Woman 2 series, we will talk about his sister, Miriam. What can we learn from this story, kids? Number one, God gives us the opportunity to be part of his plans. Nile River is a very, very dangerous body of water. It's fast, it's strong, with crocodiles swimming, but Moses didn't sink or get eaten. This is proof that if God has a plan for you, he will make it happen. What's even more amazing is God allowed Miriam to be part of the plan. She was the one who looked out for the basket and even had the courage to talk to Pharaoh's daughter if she needed a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby. If she didn't do these things, God would have made another way. But because she did, she made a huge part in history because Moses became the man who led the Israelites. A simple illustration of what Miriam did is like a setter in volleyball. Who plays volleyball here? The setter seldom score points, but he or she is the one making sure that they toss the ball nicely in order for their team to spike the ball hard on the opposing team to score points. Miriam made sure that Moses is safe as he floats in the Nile River and that someone will take care of him. The second lesson that we can learn from this story is that God gives us grace and wisdom to fulfill his plans. Miriam was quick in thinking about talking to Pharaoh's daughter and suggesting someone to nurse for baby Moses. Courageous as well to even have the conversation with her. God gave Miriam the wisdom and grace to come up with a plan quickly and convincingly. And because of this, she was able to bring Moses back to their family. So what can you learn from this story of Miriam? Miriam was just a little girl, but she watched out for her brother, even bravely talking to the princess to protect him. You see, God also calls us to watch out for our siblings and for other kids. We don't go and put them in danger or bully them. We protect one another. As you do that, you will be setting an example for other kids and you are helping them follow God. So what's our power truth again, kids? I can help others follow God. I can help others follow God. Our power verse, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Moses was born at a time when baby boys were being killed. But God sent Miriam to save him so Moses could deliver the Israelites from slavery when he grew up. Thousands of years later, Jesus was also born during the time when baby boys were being killed. But God allowed Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, to hide him in Egypt so that when he grew up, Jesus would save us all from our sins. And as we end our lesson today, kids, let me ask you two questions. Number one, how should you treat other kids younger than you? Number two, how should you treat other kids? And that's all for today, kids. I hope you've learned something new from our lesson today. Have a great day. God bless us all. Goodbye. He is a great God. He is a awesome, wonderful God. Mighty in power, author of wisdom, better than life. Our God who sits on the throne.